Peace and blessings, budget besties. This is your girl Jay with Jay Lenore Budgets. And in today's video, we are doing part two of our budgeting 101 series. So if that's something you're interested in, please keep watching. Hello guys and welcome back to Jay Lenore Budgets. Um, if this is if you're new here, thank you for joining us. If you've been here with me, thank you so much for coming back and continuing to support me on this journey. I really appreciate having all of you here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this video so that hopefully it will not be too long. Um, but I'm going to start off with a brief recap of the first video from the budgeting 101 series so in that first video we tracked our expenses or maybe if you're doing it for a full 30 days maybe you're in the midst of tracking your expenses which is perfectly fine but either way um, once you complete that exercise you should have your spending categories or some people refer to them as your variable expenses so you should have your spending categories and you should already kind of have some type of idea as to the amount that's going that you're going to budget for each one of those categories so that's what the expense tracking does it kind of helps you to see what you're spending things on and how much you're spending so that you can kind of create your categories and set a budget for those categories okay so hopefully like i said you've already done that or you're in the midst of doing that and that will give you your actual cash envelopes okay now we also went over the over the debt picture okay so um you should also have already have your debt written down whether you have it written down on notebook paper or whether you went in and printed this free resource from the budget mom's uh, website you should have all of your debt written down and you should have prioritized that debt and you should have determined how much you are going how much you can afford to give whatever your first debt is that you're going to pay off because remember everybody excuse me everybody gets the minimum payment except the one that you're trying to pay off and you want to give whatever you can to that particular debt so you should already have an idea of what that particular debt that very first debt that you're going to pay off you should already know what that is and be ready to move on from there so in today's video, I kind of rewrote because I wrote my numbers down all over this. So I kind of rewrote that on a new debt picture because like I said, this is a free resource so I can print it out as much as I like. I went ahead and wrote that information down and I just put the total here. And so today, in today's video, we are actually going to go into the other information that we need so that we can put our budget together. Okay, so the other piece that we're, the next piece that we're tackling is our monthly bills, okay? Cash, our cash envelopes and our debt is not the full picture. Unfortunately, we have other responsibilities that we have to add into our budget, and that is our monthly bills. Those bills typically cannot be paid off. That's something that's going to be ongoing from month to month. That's gonna be rent utilities, cell phone, um, if you pay your car insurance monthly. Um, some people don't. Some people do it every six months or once a year. But whatever monthly expenses you have, we now need to look at that. Um, another thing that we are going to do is we are going to write down our due dates. So I am going to grab a Sharpie if I can find, <laughs> if I can find what I did with them here we go so I have my sharpies because I find that just writing with regular ink sometimes does not show up well enough so um, I wrote this in regular ink because I want to highlight the information that we're covering today with the sharpie and make it darker okay so I am just going to use the bottom part of my um, debt picture of my debt. I'm just going to use the bottom part of this page to write down my monthly bills. And I'm also going to write, I also want to know what the 
estimate of those bills because utilities, for example, electric bill, that changes, that could change. Like maybe during the summertime, your electric bill is higher because the kids are home from school and, you know, and maybe once they're back in school, you don't, you know, the electricity bill goes down because they're not home all day, you know, that kind of thing. So you have to just, you know, estimate these and this will change. I mean, this is, none of this is actually set in stone. These numbers can change. You just have to work your budget the way you see fit, the way you see your bills and everything going. So for me, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to go back because there's nowhere up here that allows me to be able to write my due dates. So I am going to just write, go up here real quickly. My Discover card, which is my first debt that I'm paying off, um, has a due date of the 18th of the month. Um, my personal loan is actually due on the 23rd of the month. And my car payment is actually due on the 16th of the month. So I am just going to go ahead and add those things um, so that when I get ready to create my budget, I also know when the, what the due dates are because of course we want to be, be sure that when we create our budget we're paying everything in a way that we're making we're, we're budgeting everything in a way that will allow us to make those payments prior to the due dates okay because we don't want bad credit around here we're budgeting <laughs> budgeting is going to help us get our finances together and at the same time that's going to cause a ripple effect for our credit as well so um yeah so anyway let's go ahead i'm going to write down my monthly bills and i'm going to zoom you in a little bit closer so give me one second okay all righty so at the bottom of this i actually have um rent and utilities which i am in a unique situation guys um I actually um, have a roommate, but I guess you could say I'm more of a housemate because I actually live with a friend of mine that has a townhome and she's buying, she's purchasing her townhome. And so for me, her and I have worked out an agreement where I pay her the same thing every month for rent and utilities. So everything is combined and I make one, I give her that once a month and that's it. <laughs> so I am in a unique situation. It's not like I have a roommate, like we're in an apartment and we're splitting everything down the middle. Um, like I said, I we have agreed upon a set amount and that is what I pay her for rent and utilities. Obviously that is due on the first of the month. And um, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I do not disclose the amount because of the situation. If we were in an apartment and everything was split down the middle, I would not mind sharing that. But because this is money that I give her, and so this is like a payment that I make to her. So this is like not really side income because of course I'm here and the bills are higher with me being here or whatever, but I don't, people that know me that watch the videos, I just don't want to disclose how much I give her a month because, you know, I, I don't mind sharing my business, my financial picture, but I don't want to, I'm not trying to share her business, her finances. So that's why I do not disclose the amount that I give to her, um, each month, but I do give her one set amount for my renting utilities and I give that to her on the first of the month. Um, I also have my car insurance. Um, that is due on the fifth because I do pay mine monthly and I'm just going to write down the payment. So I have that estimated at $187 a month. Um, that is for my car insurance and my rental insurance because I do have rental insurance. And if you've been here, you know I had this a little on the high side because I was in an accident. That was my fault. So that's why it's a little higher. Um, hopefully that will come down after you know some time passes. But I don't know. With everything going up, it may not come down. I'm not sure. Um, I also have my cell phone bill. 
that is actually due on the seventh of the month and I had that originally estimated at $121 a month, but they actually have gone up on me. So I have to update that to $124 a month because now it's $123 and some change. So I estimate that at being $124. And I also have a gym membership that is due on the 15th and that is $39 a month. So that is it for me, um, for my bills. Um, yeah, <laughs> my monthly bills. I pay my rent utilities, my car insurance, my cell phone, and a gym payment. Um, the other bills that I pay are actually my debt um, bills that I'm trying to get rid of. So that is what I have. This is actually, so this actually gives me a total of everything um, as far as all of my bills with my debt included. This is what I pay monthly. I have my credit card, my loan, my a personal loan, my car loan, rent utilities, car insurance, cell phone, and a gym membership. And I have written down the due dates and I have estimated the amounts that I currently pay for those bills. Now my gym is fixed. It, I mean, it, it went up $3, but it's the same thing every month. So that's 39. The car insurance is usually 186 and some change. So I do that, I estimate that at 187. I always budget it at 187. And my cell phone, like I said, it appears to be hundred gone up to $123 and some change. I am currently paying on a phone. You know how you, when you get a new phone, you can actually um, divvy up the payments and add that to your bill. So that one is a little higher because I am paying for my current phone right now. Um, so that's included in that. So this is what I have that I pay monthly. All right. So... Now, at this point, we've got our cash envelopes. We've got the amounts for those cash envelopes. We've got our debt. We know we've prioritized that debt and we've determined how, you know, what that first debt we're going to pay off and so that we can get started on that. And we've added in our bills. The only other thing to do now is to talk about savings. And that's the fun part to me. I mean, we have to save up, you know, we have to be saving. I am not... I don't follow or I don't agree with, you know, throwing everything to your debt and not saving. I don't subscribe to that, um, to that thought because I, I well, um, I remember a pastor, he said, a, I remember hearing a sermon a long time ago where he was saying, never give everybody, never give anybody your everything. And so for me, I am not going to give everything, throw every single dime that I can to my debt without having some savings somewhere. So let's talk about sinking funds and savings, which is the second part um, of this video. Let's and start with sinking funds first. All right, so I do have an emergency fund and I would encourage everyone to have an emergency fund. And it, cause it is exactly what it is. We don't know when an emergency may happen and we want to try to be somewhat prepared for that in the event that there's something. We don't wanna have to go back into debt or use a credit card to pay for an emergency if we don't have to. Because the whole premise here is that we're going to be budgeting, we're going to set up the things that we need so that that cash is, a, on, is available if necessary or when needed, okay? So everyone should have an emergency fund. That goes without saying. So if this is the only, depending on your debt and income, if this is the only thing that you can afford to have right now, I highly encourage that you do have an emergency fund, okay? Um, for me, now outside of that, I have a home sinking fund. And this one, um, I just typically use 
uh, for anything that I need to buy pers for, personally for my house. Because again, I am in a situation where I basically rent a room from my friend. So her house was already pretty much furnished, but I do have my own bedroom furniture and some other things that I do have upstairs. So we have a townhome. I'm upstairs. She's downstairs. So I pretty much have the upstairs to myself, so to speak. She comes up here sometimes, but I pretty much have the upstairs to myself. Um, so anything that I need for, you know, my personal things around the house, then I have a sinking fund for that. But I'm also using this to save for when I do move out. Um, obviously, I can't stay here forever. So I will have to go back into my own, um, my own place, whether that be a house or an apartment, and I will have to buy furniture. So that's what I have my home sinking fund for. Um, I also have a subs and fees sinking funds. And I'm going through these just in case you need some um, ideas of uh, sinking funds that you need to be that you want to save up for. Because actually, I established my sinking funds by watching a whole bunch of other YouTubers because I didn't know what I didn't want to forget anything. So I watched a bunch of YouTube videos, and that's what helped me determine what sinking funds I needed. So I have one. This is for subscriptions and fees. Now, when we looked at our monthly debt we you know we kind of just went through um what we what we typically pay monthly but when you're working on, when you're working through that i have this sheet that i printed which was free off of the budget mom's website we also have to think about this day and time our annual memberships and subscriptions there are so many subscription boxes i don't know where this idea came from <laughs> to start you know to have people to be able to shop you know um fabletics and who else uh savage at the rihanna's um a line that she has adore me everybody wants to do subscription services now so that is something that you need to consider um as well as sam's memberships costco memberships um anything that you have that you pay annually you are going to want to keep track of that and you may want to create a sinking fund for that so that when that annual fee comes up you can have that so again this sheet is also a free resource from the budget mom website you can also use good old notebook paper or if you have a tablet or whatever you don't have to have anything fancy but um, again this is free this is a free resource that you can print and you want to keep track of your annual um, fees as well so i wanted to make sure that i touched that when i would when i did this we're looking at what we pay monthly Okay, this is for what we pay twice a year or annually and things that we still need to keep up with. So because that's going to impact our budget when those things hit our accounts. So this is something else you want to keep track of and you may want to create a sinking fund for these things, which is what I have done here with subs and fees. All right. So I also have rainy day. And this is just for me. Now, this may sound crazy, but for me, I don't actually want to touch my emergency fund. So my emergency fund is at a different bank. It's, you know, it's something that I typically, th I don't have access. I don't have an ATM card for it. Um, if I want something immediately out of this account, then I basically have to make a long drive to go get it. So it has to be worth it <laughs> is what I'm saying. For me, it has to be something that I really need that money for, for me to pull money out of this account because I have to jump through hoops to get to it. And I intentionally set it up that way. This rainy day fund is kind of like another emergency fund, but it's one that I can get to if I need it. So rainy day for me is where I go to. If I have an emergency, I want to go to rainy day before I have to go to my emergency fund because I am really not trying to touch my main emergency fund because I am trying to ultimately build up 12 months of expenses in this account. And if I keep going in it, then I'm not going to get there. So like I said, this is more of the rainy day is more of an emergency fund where I can, um, you know, if something, if emergency comes up, I'm trying to build this up so that if an emergency comes up, hopefully there'll be enough in rainy day so that I don't have to touch this. Because like I said, ultimately I want one year of um, my expenses, my spending, whatever to be in this emergency fund. 
right now i only have 22 the last time i checked it was two thousand two hundred eighty eight dollars in this account so obviously i have a long way to go to get to 12 months of expenses but like i said if i go in it and i'm taking money out then it it's going to take me even longer to get there i have direct deposit set up from my my check from my full-time job so this is this just this is this whole thing is just automatic i'm not doing anything with this um, when i get paid that money is already going to that account because it comes out of my check it goes there and it's just automatic it's not i check it to make sure that everything looks right on my account but outside of that i do not touch it rainy day i have that in my ally account and so that makes it more accessible if i need it and this is where i want to go first for any emergencies um, that may come up okay it's not a required fund um but you know i i like having it all right another thing that i have and i'm going to just go over here i have a personal sinking fund which is the j sinking fund um that's just for me i put money in there i buy myself something whatever that may be this one is for me i also have gifts gifts, birthdays, graduations, you know, whatever the case may be. I also have car, which is for mainly for car maintenance, but you know, I'll continue to let this add up because hey, maybe one day it might be a down payment on another car, I don't know. But I just continue to let this add up. Um a lot of times when I get oil changes, I try to cash flow that. And so what I mean by cash flow is I try to take that out of my, you know, my check whenever I need an oil change. Um, I'm trying to build this up for more expensive car maintenance and or a new car. So that's for me, that's kind of what this sinking fund is for. Um, it's just for me to have some, you know, some money in case something happens with my car so that hopefully I won't have to use a credit card to pay for it. Um, I also have taxes, you know, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam gonna get his now you can't leave Uncle Sam out. This is for my car, my, my property tax on my car and my registration. Here in North Carolina, we have to get inspections. So that's what's included in that. And then um, and I also, because the last few years, well, the last year or two, I've actually have been owing on my income tax when I file in, you know, by April 15th. So I actually am working on trying to have about $500 in there for that, because that's what I've been having to pay back every year. So um, I'm trying to build that up for um, anything that I owe at tax time as well. And last but not, but not least, I have a vacation sinking fund um, where I am putting money up for a future vacation. So that is what I have, guys. Um, if I mean, this is, may look very different for you. If you have kids, especially, I do not have any children. I have a lot of children in my life, but I don't have children myself. So if you have children, you may have college funds. Um, you may be saving up for a, co a college fund for your children or, you know, just whatever. You have to figure out what you need for your family, okay, for your situation and your family. Um, I would encourage you, I mean, some people have a lot of sinking funds. And if your budget can handle a lot of sinking funds, that's wonderful. Um, but I would suggest that you try to limit this you know, your sinking funds, especially if you have a lot of debt to get rid of that you try to limit it to the necessities. Um, and then you can always add on as you pay off debt and free up more funds. Or, you know, you can get a part time job. Or, you know, if you have the ability to do that or do something on the side, some side, make some side hustle money to help you fund the things that you need. That's always an option as well. So guys, so um, your homework for this video <laughs> is to uh, think about that. Think about what you need to save for and um, and how you're going to go about. You also want to allot how much you want to give um, towards each sinking fund and how often you're going to give towards it. So that's something to think about as well. I am going to break that down for you um, from, my, from what how I do it in another video just so that I don't make this one too long. But this is what I have for my sinking funds and I will explain in another video how I go about funding mine. I will also give some suggestions on how you 
may choose to look at it, um, especially for something like subs and fees, um, you know, or anything that you have a goal for. If you're going on vacation, if you're going to Hawaii, you know, next year in July, then, you know, you want to think about that and that's going to determine how much you need to um, put towards put into the vacation fund each pay period. So, you know, um, we'll go into that some more, but right now for this, for the purposes of this video, I just want you to think about what sinking funds you need for you and your family, okay? For you and your current situation. I just want you to write down what those are, all right? The other thing are savings challenges or savings challenges are actually near and dear to my heart i love watching cash stuffing videos of savings challenges and everything um if your budget will allow it you know you want to try to have some savings challenges um and for me savings challenges just helps me be intentional with my savings because when I show you my budget, you will see, especially when it comes to my sinking funds, I just kind of sink whatever into those funds. Um, but savings challenges, because I'm trying to complete a challenge, for me, it helps me to be more intentional with my savings. Now, one thing that I wanna say is you could actually find you a 1K savings challenge. You could complete that, and then once you finish, put that 1K into your emergency fund. So you can use this to actually fund your savings challenges. A lot of YouTubers do it. I do it myself. I do, save, I, I do savings challenges to help me pay extra on my debt and to fund um, my sink my sinking funds so you could very well do it that way too and I love doing savings challenges because it keeps me motivated because if they're set depending on the challenge that I do it actually gives me the amounts that I need to contribute so to speak and so that I can reach my goal so I think savings challenges are a great way to um, to help save for those sinking funds and or you know, for those things that you have that you're trying to do, like vacations or whatever. So if you've been following me, you know that right now I do the 100 envelope challenge. Now, if you're just starting out, like I said, depending on your debt and income, you may not be able to do this one. I could not do this one a couple of years ago when I first budgeted. I tried it. <laughs> it didn't work. My budget could not handle this one. Now I'm currently doing it and um, it's going to take me some time. It's going to take some time, but I am working towards it very slowly to get it completed. And so, um, so yeah, I'm actually doing the 100 envelope challenge. I also am doing a summer challenge, which this one is a challenge by Lisa Grateful Me, um, where she has different, she has one for each season. She has winter, spring, fall, and summer, and each one of them is $150. So there again, each season, you could complete this challenge and take that $150 and apply it towards the sinking fund. Easy peasy, right? $150, um, you know, it shouldn't take too long to get there. I think it's like $10. I think the way it's laid out is like $10 or something for each item or whatever that you color in. So I'll be showing these in another video. Um, but right now we're just looking at savings ch challenges that will actually fit your budget. And that's what I want you to do for this section. If you want to do savings challenges, then I want you to find challenges that will actually fit your budget. And maybe, like I said, you can use those to help fund your sinking funds. All right. The last one that I have is my 1K challenge, which if you've been following me, you know, I use the blackout bingo. And so um, once I complete that blackout bingo, I will have a thousand dollars. This is actually going towards my debt. I already know that um, it's going towards my discover card, actually. So once I reach that 1K, I will I will be giving that to my Discover card and then I'll start over on another challenge. So again, guys, this is your homework for this video is to get your sinking funds um, right to know what sinking funds you want and what savings challenges your budget can handle. All right. So I think that's going to be it. I think I've rambled on enough. Um, like I said, don't forget about those annual subscriptions. We have our debt. 
we have our monthly bills um, but we cannot forget about anything that we pay annually um, or every six months or um, any you know anything that extra that we may have that doesn't come out monthly you want to be sure that you track that as well so that you're not surprised when those things come up you're going to want to know the date that those um, annual fees are due what the name of it is what the annual fee is and if you so choose then you want to know what it costs you monthly so that you know how much you need to save so that you have what you need by that due date so definitely can't leave that out sinking funds savings challenges once we complete all of that we have our total picture to go ahead and start crafting our budget which is what we're going to do in the next video once again guys thank you so much for being here if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below guys hit that subscribe button join me on this journey join me in this budgeting series i'd love to have you come along if you um so please hit that subscribe button if you feel the desire you can hit that notification bell as well um, guys thank you so much and i will see you in the comments have a wonderful and blessed day bye bye